What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Saint Riot. Uh, uh, I made a build. This is uh, just strictly a build. There's no... I, I named it after Delita, because I'm a Final Fantasy Tactics nerd. But that's, that's it. There's nothing else to the build. It's just, uh, by my standards, uh, an invader build. A mean invader build by my standards. That's it. That's what it is. I made it. Here it is in action. Look at him go. So this build is at level 133, and it's a strength build uh, with 12 faith, and that's it. I think it's 12. Um, that gets me everything I need. Uh, it gets me bestial vitality, gets me uh, bestial sling, gets me catch flame, and you could do this exact, well you could do this exact same thing, but you could do something very similar to this with a dex build. Uh, and you could do it using intelligence instead of faith. It's just a matter of recognizing uh, in Elden Ring what a little bit of a stat gets you. In Dark Souls, it was, you know, you had to pay uh, a hefty fine in terms of stats to get uh, some good, you know, returns on stuff. For example, in Dark Souls 1, you know, Wrath of Gods was a great, um, that was a great miracle, but it, it was going to cost you 28 faith to have that. And that's a lot to pump into faith for just that one miracle. By contrast, you had Pyromancies, which didn't cost anything at all, uh, and gave you access to a lot. There was no stats required for, you know, Black Flame or Great Combustion. Those were things that you could just throw on any build that you wanted to, and they served a purpose. Um, Black Flame, obviously, like, a very good uh, tool to break poise against, like, a very poisy opponent. Black Flame did a lot of poise damage. So, those things changed with Dark Souls 2 because it's kind of insane to give you that for free. But, uh, Elden Ring has sort of gone back to that style and given us a bunch of really good stuff for cheap instead of for free. And that is, uh, I don't know, something I'm not sure a lot of people have recognized 
yet. So we'll go over the build. This build is like, like I said, it, it's really not any type of build. I just, it's just a Saint Riot strength build for invasions that is mean by my standards. Uh, it, it's capable of winning the types of invasions that I want to win. Um, as an example, this invasion. A long, drawn out uh, war of attrition. That's, that's what I want. I am sure that if you do invasions, like me, you have probably invaded a couple of co-opers and you start fighting the Phantom, maybe, and the host is alone for like a split second and they have to fight one enemy while they're by themselves and they immediately lose. So like, nothing, you know, like it feels like, for me, it feels like I didn't do anything. It just feels like an invasion, like just a loading screen simulator. There was nothing cool that happened. Uh, and it's the same way if I was, like if I took this build and I just stacked a, a bunch of poise and I just crouch poked with a colossal sword with Royal Knight's Resolve and a Spear Talisman. It would be the same thing. I wouldn't feel like I had done anything. Um, wins and losses, like in terms of like raw numbers, like they don't mean anything to me. Like, okay, so you, I, I won at Elden Ring, but do I feel good about... No. Versus, like this type of build, doing this type of invasion, I love because it feels like uh, a story. This is, you know, there's, a, there's an entire like act uh, you know, there's three acts to this invasion, and you don't get that if you just, you know, walk in and Rivers of Blood, the host, uh, and they immediately lose. Or if you walk in and you start fighting a phantom and a bird flies down out of the sky and pecks the host eyes out and they die. You know, <laughs> like, I don't feel like I did anything. I would rather not have that invasion than win it at that point, you know? Uh, all it's doing is just costing it's it's valuable time that could have been a fun invasion you know so this build is like with with 12 or 14 faith whatever it is look just get on Google and Google if you're curious I've got bestial vitality I've got uh, bestial sling and catch flame and uh, the Erd tree great shield that's what our faith is getting us. That's it. That's all we need. The Erd Tree Great Shield, as you saw in the opening montage of the video, it's just immediate, you know, wizard killer. It's fantastic. Uh, for, for If there's two wizards, I'm absolutely going to use that to just get rid of one of them. I don't care which, but one of them's got to go. And the Erd Tree Great Shield is great at getting rid of one wizard. Uh, Catch Flame is beautiful for, you know, finishing off a host or a phantom who's at low health. Um, we're using the Lord Sworn Straight Sword, and the reason I'm using that one is because it has the 110 critical modifier, uh, which is nice for me because I like my parries and I like my backstabs. So having a little extra damage on there is nice. I haven't got the Jar Shard yet on this build, so I'm using the Dagger Talisman, which further increases crit damage, so 110 crit with that talisman ends up being pretty good. I've also got the Misery Cord, Misery Cord Day, I don't know how to say that word, it's French or something, uh, and it's got Royal Knight's Resolve on it. So against someone who's playing very um, predictably, I'll just pop Royal Knight's Resolve onto the dagger. The dagger has like 120 or some odd 30, 130, 140, I don't know what it is, but it has an insane crit modifier. So between that and Royal Knight's Resolve and the Dagger Talisman, it's absolutely, you know, brutal. Um, but it's also very transparent, and I like it. In, in Dark Souls 3, people would just soft swap to a Chaos Dagger uh, and either one-shot you or basically, you know, one shot you almost one shot you with a, a soft swap chaos dagger you know you're not you can't soft swap into royal knights resolve to get that like that same damage is in this game but it's very transparent and it's not something that you get for free like you have to show your opponent you're going to do it 
and it's one of those things where you're like if you did that to me I would recognize immediately what you were doing and I would start throwing out attacks that couldn't be parried so it's it's very powerful it does a lot of damage it'll kill people in one hit but it's only gonna kill people in one hit uh, who aren't paying attention so I'm fine with it doing that much damage and like I said, you can't just soft swap to it. You have to like actively like look what I'm doing. I'm about to do something terrible. You should you should think about it. And then they don't think about it. But uh, yeah, I've got uh, the claymore on this build with uh, trolls roar. I've got the uh, knight cavalry's glaive with uh, braggart's roar, which changes the two-handed heavy attacks into these giant thrust attacks that just do insane damage. I showed off at the during the little montage. Uh, I think it something like it, it did over a thousand damage with a with a heavy attack, which is pretty bonkers. Um, what else do I have on this build? Uh, I've got uh, an axe. I just think it's a cool looking axe. I, one of the enemies dropped it, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll run around with that." It's got quiet or it's got Royal Knight's Resolve on it. Um, and it's a essentially like a very nice plunge attack weapon. I've got two partisans. One has um, the giant thrust. I forget, uh, I forget what it's called. Piercing Fang. One has Piercing Fang and one has Black Flame Tornado. The Piercing Fang one I'm probably going to replace with Storm Assault because Storm Assault is very good against people who spam jump attacks. And Piercing Fang is good against people who... Uh, have a shield, but I think this build has other ways to deal with shields with the Royal Knight Resolve Great Axe and the, um, I believe it's the Hammer Talisman that gives you extra damage against shields. Um, most players who use shields uh, will probably have their guard broken by that. Good players wouldn't but it's not often you run into players who know that much and are using that specific particular type of build. Most of the really good players that I run into are all using weird stuff, which I appreciate and think is cool. Um, <laughs> most of the average players uh, are using like the stuff that people consider to be like OP or whatever. Um, you know, there's there's definitely like the overlap of the tryhards who are using like, you know, the the really good players who are using the really good stuff. Like those those do exist. They're just not something you find out in the wild, in my experience. Like I know people hate Bloodhound Step, and I I get it. I understand why you hate it, but I just the people who use it are you know. <laughs> They're not, they're not using it to like its full potential, so it's really not as bad as it could be. Um, but yeah, that's the build, that's the video. I'll probably make a bunch of more videos, and they'll all be featuring this build, so look forward to that. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, I'll see you next time. Later, y'all.